Welcome back to another Eagles film study. We're going to look at a fifth round pick, the last one for the Eagles in 2024, that being Trevor Keegan, the three year starter out of, out of Michigan. And um, he's a guy that's coming in competing for a backup spot, but he could develop into a quality starter. He has athleticism, but him being one dimensional, can he carve his way into a roster spot this season? What's up, it's your boy Central. Come back to you with another analysis video in the kids. You're not that's my real name. Eagles film review Trevor Keegan could be an excellent backup guard. I concur. All right, so look at, look at his rat as score 9.18. Um, arm length is kind of low. You can see he's kind of like in the yellow, so decent um, numbers. 40 yard dash, not really important. 10 yard dash is very 1.78, um, pretty good. Um, composite size is pretty good. I think six six foot five, three fifteen or so. So he has some uh, potential to get a little bit bigger. Um, vertical broad jump. I mean, he's not quite the athlete you would think, um, but he's pretty damn good. You know, he has all the, the measurables and um, doesn't really show up on tape, but it portends to him having a better better. Um, skill set than he should anyway let's get into it his strengths can shoot out of his stance and win early with good power he has a strong run blocker and who can move defenders so really like that you see him here um at the guard position and uh this pertains to him being a, a good combo blocker springing that guy right there i mean um that was daylight he saw right there his testing suggested that he has untapped potential so yeah definitely um he could be better than he is. So we'll see if, you know, Jeff Stoutland can tap into that. Has just enough lateral movement to seal the backside and kick out defenders in, sp in space. Can climb to the second level in both zone gap scheme run. So like that, you know, we love guys that can get to second level and be a difference maker. So he's a force once he gets moving. So here he is here. And you can see here, I think this is a combination block. Well, no, he fakes, bam, and blows that guy off. And then this is the second level, um, adeptly, you know, covering ground there. So he's moving out, kicking out, um, sealing the edge there. And then here he's crossing, you know, pulling. Excellent. And he's searching for work, searching for work. Active. All right, and then he's being the lead guy here, just blowing that those guys off the ball, making that play. So, I mean, like... He does so much, and um, he's just aware whether he's in space or at the line. He's an under, he under, underrated. He's an experienced starter with great fundamentals who looks like he could play immediately if needed. So that's great because in a pinch, we might need him. Um, and we, we suffered some injuries last year with Cam Dragons going out. And uh, the guys we called upon, they were adequate, you know, to a certain degree. But um, you can not, never have enough depth along the O-line the way those guys play. Understands how to win against stunts and is very effective at doubling up and pass protection. Yeah, he is a great assister. He's a great wingman because he, he gets the job done. Um, especially if he has if he has idle hands, he will come and attack. He will come and help you out. The awareness to spot oncoming blitz is very obvious when you watch this film and it's pr probably his best trait. Yeah, he's so aware of what's going on around him and how they're trying to break down and attack the scheme. So you can see, see him here. That left guard, just holding that, and then, bam, searching for work. He just pulls that guy out. I feel bad. Like, he just searching for work. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you doing? Um, there, just combination, you know, just seamless. And uh, he really allows the quarterback there enough time to uh, be able to scramble and uh, find that, that open uh, blade, of, those open blades of grass. So here, um, picking up twist stunts. Bam, just, that, that was just effortless. I mean, him and his, his own boy were in perfect sync. So this is good. That's a tough ask for a left guard when the militia comes from the opposite side. So you can see him here. He picks it up. Bam, I mean, he gets enough of him. He doesn't you know, need to get all of, you know, all of it, but he gets way more than you know he needs to to knock the guy off his spot and eliminate his sack attempt, even though he gets to, um, his guys get to him. That's not his fault, that it's a negative play. 
plays stuff as all good offensive linemen should. Has that nasty to him and wants to dominate in the run game. So we love a nasty offensive lineman. Pauls, those guys that get after it and um, just have a lust for uh, battle, for seeking out, especially uh, weaker opponents like cornerbacks and safeties and you know DBs, uh, small linebackers that are coming and just engulf them. So he's definitely physical. Here it is. You know he's pulling. Bam! Just destroys that guy. Oh man. Um, he's pulling here. Bam. One guy, two guys, and just engulfs them at the point of attack. Okay, there he is. He's, he's pulling, just throwing that DB out the club, man. And there he's, he's getting that backside guy, second level guy. He makes that run and, and makes, you know, sure that he, you know, that running back has a cutback lane. That's Blake Corum. Without him there, you know, he doesn't feel secure enough to uh, cut that back, and he might have gotten caught from the backside. Zero penalties in 2023, so excellent guy there. I mean, he's just aware of spacing and how to use um, his tools and um, trap guys without, you know, putting them to the ground and, and uh, committing penalties. So tells you a lot about his fundamentals. Solid. Only gave up 13 pressures on 936 snaps, uh, passing snaps the last three years. I mean, excellent. I mean, what more could you ask? Guys ended up 13 sacks, 13 pressures in, in span of two games in the league. All right, so weaknesses. Doesn't sustain his blocks in space, can reach defenders, but rarely maintains his block. Almost too aggressive at times with his strike. So he's, you know, played a bit more under control. Um, you don't think I'd be over aggressive than be passive. You know, it's a thin line, of course, but um, you can work with that. You can uh, get that temper, that get it under control. Plays too upright and tall, can be beaten by quicker defen defenders, defensive linemen who get under his pad. So I think Milton Williams will show him what he uh, is not to get, get away with in the league. Possibly due to average length and overcompensates by leaning forward at the point of attack, which can cause him to lose balance. So think about Jalen Carter in the last year when he was leaning forward. Offensive uh, guards, you know, interior guys would just bah, 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 knock him down and just sit on him. And it worked, you know, way too often because that's his, that was his, you know, go-to move. And he didn't realize, you know, he has to have better positioning. Try, you know, and better explode out of those, uh, out of his stance. Tested well, but doesn't have the feet to win against quicker tackles. Looks like he gets stuck and his body seems uncoordinated at times. I mean, it happens, yeah. <clears throat> Blame farts and all that stuff. I don't think he has athleticism currently to redirect if he loses early and gets knocked off balance. So I'll be something he can definitely work on. So, you know, some of these same things that um, were things that the most likely future, future Hall of Famer, Jason Kelsey, had come into the league. He worked on himself, worked on his game, and got better. And really, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh year pro, he started really playing at the level that we saw him uh, play at. So Michael Hall here just destroys him with a nasty spin move. Takes advantage of his leverage. You know, he overset, and uh, they'll, they'll make you uh, regret. Pretty much looked, took all his snaps, uh, caught snaps at left guard. Like a first still, he's a big issue for back backup uh, offensive linemen, I should say. But, I mean, you know, I know either. Jordan Marlon did say it's like, you know, um, wiping your ass with, un, you know, the wrong hand. You'll get the job done, but it'll be sh But, you know, if he can man, not in you know, center position, but those two guard positions and uh, get used to it, I think we'll have ourselves more than a, more than a bargain. But Trevor Keegan feels like a really good pick in the fifth round. I have to agree. And I'd be surprised if he doesn't make the roster. He's a three-year starter who knows how to play the position and has the awareness that you want to see. Yeah, so that's huge. A lot of guys, they're not, not, they aren't aware of shit. He's seen a lot in those trenches in, uh, at Michigan, you know, high-level play and competed for, you know, national championships, which, they, you know, with them winning this past year. He's a physical run blocker who is slightly limited in space, but is good enough in space to run a variety of concepts that I expect the Eagles to run this year. Um, Oz, counter, pin, pull. I'm not forgetting what Oz is, but... Um, okay, outside zone, sorry. Um, yeah. He can sustain those blocks, just not in space. He can also hold up in pass protection, and although his pass protection numbers are excellent, I expect your interior lineman to cause him trouble. Yeah. I mean, I've got some guys that can train him about that. Train him up. The biggest issue with Keegan is the lack of versatility, which I'm not really... I don't see as, as such a huge demerit. I imagine that it's a huge reason why he fell to the fifth, as teams don't want backup offensive linemen who can only play one position, which I understand. 
you know, but we have the um, the luxury of being able to, I mean, train them at, at guard, right guard, it's not, it's not as good, but if it can be a good option coming off the bench at, you know, just one position left guard, we'll take that. I expect the Eagles will try to give Keegan reps at right guard throughout the summer as the Eagles will want him to be an option at both spots. Yeah, precisely. Um, you don't want, you know, he might be as good at one, but, you know, train him up for both. If Keegan can develop on the right side too, then he should be an excellent backup at guard who can step in for a few games of season if needed. I have seen some comments about him playing right tackle, or sorry, playing tackle, but you know, just the length for him uh, would limit him. And, you know, he's played on the interior his whole career, so... That would be a hard ask, you know, going from tackle to guard, while not um, still not easy, it's more feasible. I don't think he has the arm length or profile to uh, that the Eagles are looking for at tackle. So, if he reaches the his uh, reaches the potential that his athletic testing suggests he has, then it's possible he can develop into a starter. So, don't rule him out. Um, and yeah, I agree with this next sentiment. He isn't going to start at left guard here while Landon, while Landon Dickerson is here. But it's possible he could push Tyler Steen if he struggles at right guard. So it wouldn't be out of the question. I mean, he'd be a rookie playing, but God has an intelligence. He seems to be ready-made coming out the box to uh, to play. Overall, I would expect him to make the roster and develop into a versatile backup who can start a few games a season if needed. Maybe even become a full-time starter down the line if he reaches his athletic potential. For fifth-round pick, that's pretty good. Now, definitely damn sure agree because, I mean, he's borderline steel. And like a lot of guys I, I saw we had... Uh, we picked had good athletic traits and um i'm excited to see that because the colts last year won the athletic <laughs> um, part of the draft because they got supreme talent and guys who uh were pretty damn good you know run a d tackle who ran a 4-4 last year i mean i'm excited to see what he how he develops maybe he can be a future philly guy you know coming here in free agency but you know so we'll get up here out of here on that note i like the guy um like what i saw on tape and I like um, his measurables and his, his football IQ. But anyways, we'll uh, chunk this. But hey, I know the truth of the matter is that you're not even watching, though, but it's all good because I love talking about the Eagles and I love making these videos. So we'll chunk the deuces officially. But as always, as always, it's fly, Eagles, fly, and let's motherfucking go. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life, or Centron Laughs, or other social media.